Welcome to the Low Carb Conferences podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Jeff Gerber. And today we have two special guests, Chris and Miriam Baer, the owners and founders of Keto Chow. Chris and Miriam have been big supporters of many events, including ours, and they'll be back exhibiting in February. So how's it going today, Chris and Miriam? It's going pretty good. good. It's a good day. Yeah, it, it's it's two of our children had a birthday today, Yay. so we're, we're having a good day. <laughs> well, happy birthday to the kids, and it's great to have you here. So a little bit more about Chris and Miriam and their company. So Chris is a technology and computer geek. He became interested in nutritionally complete future foods back in 2014. While Miriam and Chris were busy raising their six children, they learned about the ketogenic diet through their family's own personal health journey. They found the diet to be effective and wanted a simple meal solution, but there wasn't anything available on the market. So they went out on their own and produced their own formula. They perfected it and they gave it a funny name, calling it Keto Chow. And it wasn't only tasty, but it was also attracting the attention of their friends and family. So what started out with making batches in their own kitchen has now grown into a much larger company and has become a full-time job for both. So far, the company has sustained the test of time. Despite its growth, Chris and Miriam have never forgotten their mission, a focus on family, community, healing, and superior nutrition. So guys, if you can give us a little more background, tell us about your personal and professional interests. Yeah, so I tend to dominate these conversations. So as much as possible, I'm going to defer to Miriam. So, so do you want to talk and first? I can't think of anything to say. I'll just <laughs> shoot back. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Chris developed Keto Chow because he really wanted a shake. And I think right away, it's so easy to hear shake and just turn off your brain yep. and be like, I am not a shake person, right? Uh, which I totally was the same way when he said he wanted to do a shake. I was like, are you crazy? No, oh, no I'm lazy. No, <laughs> but there is a place for a shake. And I think there's a place that's not necessarily everybody, you know, is going to have it. But sometimes you have dental surgery. Sometimes you have knee surgery and you can't get up out of bed for six days or six weeks or, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of different applications for keto chow in addition to just you know, being lazy and not wanting to cook your food sometimes, right? So we we really enjoy having Keto Chat as a tool um, that you can put into your life wherever you would like it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be every day, right? So can I ask, um, you know, back in the days when you were developing in your, your kitchen, where would you get raw ingredients? I, you know, as, oh. as Chris was a, you know, uh, a geek, and, yep. and and the thing is, uh, you know, for myself, I, I'm a geek and a nerd as well. And so we, we want to kind of take the deeper dive. So how did that all start? Where did you get ingredients? Well, so back in 2014, there was this company that they did a Kickstarter, named themselves Soylent, which I thought was pretty funny, mm -hmm. like Soylent Green, right? Um, and it was, it was a software engineer who was like, I'm tired of making food. I want to just mix something up. And it's super easy. And that actually spoke to me. And I was like, I want to do that too. And so there was this whole movement of do it yourself where mm -hmm. people were sourcing ingredients on Amazon and just making recipes because the company that was doing Soylent, their Kickstarter just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. And so people are like, I want to make my own. I started doing that too, but it was with a really high carbohydrate recipe. Um, and someone else had made the recipe and I was just tweaking stuff and playing with it. And as time went on, well, the main reason why I wanted to do it was because I, I thought it might be a good way to lose weight. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up gaining back all the weight that I had initially lost. And I thought, you know, I've heard about this keto thing. We had, we had had a, a very, very cursory introduction to keto uh, because of some health issues with our son. But I'm like, I want to try a keto version of this of this nutritionally complete shake thing. Um, and the whole idea was, if you wanted to, you could live on it three meals a day, but I, ju I, I just wanted really simple stuff. So I came up with a really, well, at first I was using a really terrible recipe. <laughs> um, 
then the completely changing things around, I went for, why don't we make it actually taste good so that I will enjoy drinking it? Mm -hmm. And this whole time I was blogging about it. I was um, sharing the recipe on the website that I had set up for myself. And it just kind of grew into this thing where other people wanted to try it as well, but they didn't want to buy all those ingredients. And so people were like, hey, can you can you sell me a sample? I'm like, uh, I don't even know how to do that. So set up a WooCommerce site and I would get home from work. I was I was a system administrator for a um, nonprofit. nonprofit genealogy company. And I'd get home from work and I would mix up a batch of, you know, 21 meals of keto chow and it. Throw it in the mailbox. Yeah, throw it in the mailbox. And, and after a while, it got to the point where um, Miriam started helping me ship stuff out. Mm -hmm. So I would mix stuff up and then she would ship it out. And then it got to the point where every Saturday the kitchen was blocked off. We had friends and family coming over and we were putting the stuff together and then shipping it out. But one of the really important things that kind of comes back to all this is I wanna make sure that people understand that we're not trying to replace people's steak. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to replace their, I, I literally, outside in the hall right now, there's a sous vide going with two steaks in it. And when we're done with this interview, I'm gonna take them out to the grill with a, the blow torch and I'm gonna sear them up because that's what I want to have for lunch. But this morning, when we were getting ready for, we we had we have two live streams today and then this podcast that we're doing. And so we don't have a lot of time. So I had keto chow for breakfast. I actually ran it through an ice cream maker and had that while, while we were having a, um, while we were having one of our meetings. One of our meetings. Yeah. But I want to make sure people understand that the whole point of this is that you can use it as a tool for the times that you don't have either the time or the energy or the expertise or whatever to make something nutritious as opposed to going out and getting a bunless burger and then you're still hungry afterwards because they messed up on it and you had to scrape all the ketchup off and it wasn't very filling and you know that sort of thing. That's, that's really what we're looking for for the majority of people. And like Miriam said, there are the edge cases where you've got people who have dental surgery. And Keto Chow was designed so that if you had the need mm -hmm. or you're just really lazy, you could eat it three meals a day, four months at a time. If, if someone was on a feeding tube, um, they could live off it and actually do really well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have several people, uh, one guy in particular who's mom is in later stages of alzheimer's and she's she doesn't eat yeah, she anything eat but keto chow yeah because she just will not she doesn't tolerate the texture of any other foods um the doctors he said that the doctors are trying to figure out what he's feeding her because instead of declining um physically she's actually getting stronger and better you yeah you want to say something yeah go ahead yeah well no that's interesting chris uh, when you bring up the tube feeding thing, uh, the only type of ketogenic tube feeding is this keto cow. And, yeah. you know, it's filled with um, there's vegetable oil. Syrup solids, there's mm -hmm. vegetable oil. There's, I, I've looked at the ingredients to that. And, well, I wonder if the people who make that have actually ever tried it, to be, to be frank and honest, or if they've ever tried eating just that for a couple days and seeing what it does right. and the longest i've gone with just and i did this for an experiment uh, if your listeners know who dave feldman is he does a lot of crazy experiments on himself he wanted to know what different fats do in isolation you know where all things equal if the only variable you changed in your diet was what types of oils you know polyunsaturated saturated monounsaturated what would that affect your um uh your lipid system like what would that have a ch uh, an effect on and so for a hundred days i ate nothing but keto chow with just different types of fat uh turns out saturated fat specifically butter gives the best metabolic results 
MCT oil in, and I actually had another lady who was doing this along with me. So in our N equals two, um, MCT oil caused a, a significant spike in, um, sorry, triglycerides. triglycerides. Thank you. And it crashed our HDL. Nice. So I, 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 that's why I actually don't recommend uh, MCT oil unless people need it for a specific neurological condition. So I saw that you uh, on social media were bragging about your, your 100 day challenge. And it, this was precipitated by Dave Feldman's uh, suggestion. Yeah, well, he, he only has so much bandwidth. And so if he can get some parallel processing going on right. with multiple people doing experiments, hey, that's all the better. But yeah, and, and I was, he gave me a list of uh, blood tests to do. So I, I was getting blood tests every week and it was, it was a very interesting experiment. Um, lots um, of good data. And like we said earlier, like you don't need to live on keto chow. We no, this was. encourage people to do a hundred days of keto chow. That's for crazy it people. It was just. <laughs> He just wanted to see without changing any other variables yeah. uh, to change the fat. And so keto chow is a good tool for that. Like, right. So there were there were uh, two purposes. Number one, to change the, the oils and the fats and to see what the effects on the lipids were. And then to also demonstrate that, that you would do fine eating this way yeah. for 100 days. But that's not the intent. It's, it's, it's a meal replacement, a, a supplement uh, yeah. to... to to use it as your at your liking mm -hmm. yeah so you're you're at work and you don't know what to have or i my daughter a couple it was just, it was actually last week um she forgot to bring a lunch and she was working here at at the office and she's like uh do you have any food for me i'm like well i have an empty blender bottle and some heavy cream do you want chocolate peanut butter keto chow for lunch and she said yes i do so i took uh, seriously 30 seconds mixed one up and stuck it in the fridge and about an hour or so later she grabbed it yeah so getting back to um you know the fats and oils that go into these products so yep. one of the things about keto cal is that it has a, a long shelf life because of the oils and and so you know the the question is back at you about your product and the shelf life and the the thing is it doesn't come with the with with the with the lipids with the fats yeah. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that and and how and the shelf life. How do, how do you manage all that? Yeah, do you want to talk about that, Mary? Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's it's interesting. A lot of people are uh, frustrated that we don't have fat included already, but Just we find that to be a, a power. benefit because everybody's not exactly the same, and your your fat is your lever, right? That you're moving up and down uh, to do things with your body. And so you want to get your protein and then you want to use the fat as a lever. So everybody's going to have a different amount of fat and they can choose different types of fat. Like we recommend just to try it out, try it with a uh, heavy cream, like a fourth of a cup of heavy cream, and then 20 ounces of water, mix it together. So that's a really good, easy way to, to, to do it, but you can use any fat you want. Avocado like oil, coconut oil. Bacon grease. We use butter. Bacon grease was weird. Yes. Butter was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's it's even interesting because you'd think, well, butter would like solidify in the when you put it in the fridge, but we have acacia gum fiber, uh, which is an emulsifier. And so when you mix it with the butter, it just makes it all all together. And that's mm -hmm. what makes it so smooth. So it really works well. But yeah, yeah. using different fats and just having them to be whatever you want them to be really makes it customizable. And so someone who needs say 1200 calories a day would use a lot less mm -hmm. than someone who needs 1800 or 2200 calories a day. Um, we do have some people who they, they use the minimum amount of fat, which is about 10 grams. Mm -hmm. And that's just to activate the fat soluble vitamins uh, because say they're doing, I don't know, protein sparing modified fast, or they're looking just to get a lot of protein in the the the, the drink mm -hmm. and then they might be getting fat from other sources throughout the day yep. um but going on the vitamins and stuff like that and, and talking about keto cal one of the really important things with us is and this comes back to you know i started doing keto chow just with stuff off of amazon and i didn't have a lot of control over the like the sources of the ingredients we we're kind of at the whim of whatever I could find on Amazon. But now we've gotten to the point where, for instance, um, vitamin B6, there's peroxidol and there's 
Peroxidine. Yeah, peroxidine phosphate, I think is what it is. Those are two very different things. One has been shown in clinical trials to stop seizures in children. The other one has no effect. The one that you commonly see in almost everything is the cheap one. We can specify, no, I, I want to pay the 15th of a cent extra it costs to get the good one. Um, same thing with, say, um, we, we ran into Carrie Brown, and she, when we first met her, she just about lost her mind when she found out that we were using methylated B vitamins. Uh, specifically, our, our folate is methylated, so is our vitamin B12. And it doesn't take a lot of extra time, effort, or energy to use the right kinds of vitamins. But every, all manufacturers will try to use the cheapest thing possible. Mm -hmm. We're actually using this ourselves. Our children, even though keto chow, keto chow is not indicated for use by pregnant, nursing, mothers, or children. Please consult your physician before starting any dietary <laughs> program. Anyway, that's the legalese out of the way. But our kids use keto chow. And I don't want to give them the cheap ingredients. I want them to have actual vitamin A, not a precursor. I want them to have actual vitamin D3, not a precursor, vitamin uh, MK7, if you want to get technical, instead of K1. I want to make sure it's the best stuff possible because the people I love the most happen to also use this product. And a lot of people who also are our friends and uh, you know customers will tell us about people who are particularly vulnerable health-wise that need something to get them over problems. Mm -hmm. And using keto chow, it can be an important part of that. That's so great, Chris. Also go carnivore, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm looking at the product label and uh, meal replacements in general are fortified. And, and so you have minerals and vitamins in here. And, and the argument there is you, you're picking the ones that are maximally absorbable, have uh, the, the best uh, effects in terms of health. And so my question is, uh, I, I imagine you're continuously looking at the product and and what we can do to tweak it and do you foresee that things will change in the future do you have it perfect there's nothing i need to do to make it better at this point well funnily enough uh, so we just came out with this today it's the pick on sticky bun but here in the top corner if you can see it there's a version number I, I know, I know so you're geeky. like, yeah, it's the right. geekiest thing ever. There's a change log on our website because every time we learn something new, as quickly as we can, we get that into the product. About um, the different vitamins. About, yeah, different vitamins. Um, like the, the, the change that you can mix it up with butter. Like that was a revelation that just came out of nowhere when we were actually at low carb Denver in 2019. Yeah. I was mixing up some keto chow that we were going to bring to the booth to let people try. And one of the things you can mix it with is avocado oil. Um, and, and I didn't know that you could mix it up with butter at the time. And all of a sudden I was like, huh, I wonder if I mix it up the same melted butter and it, and it worked really great. So but everything that we learn, we put into keto chow. And, and if we find that one of the ingredients isn't the best one, we will change it right away. Um, the iron, for example, we used to have a lot more iron in keto chow. And I was actually contacted by one of our users on Reddit. And he said, hey, um, this is probably too much iron. I'm like, no, this is the US recommended daily intake. And he's like, well, here's the thing about that. Most men, if they get the recommended daily intake over the couple of course of months, will start to build up a toxic amount of iron. And so I researched it and the, the dude was actually right. Um, and so it's the amount that's in keto chow now is the amount that is appropriate for uh, humans who don't go through a menstrual cycle. How about that? Um, 
If you do have a menstrual cycle, then the best thing to do is to supplement with a little bit of iron. Mm -hmm. If you were doing three meals a day, or well, you can eat a steak. Or eat, yeah, eat some red meat. <laughs> I also have my girls uh, take uh, the desiccated liver pills. Mm -hmm. And that's only if they're not eating a lot of red meat. Right yeah. Now. So. But again, edge cases, if you're doing three meals of keto chow a day, which, again, not necessary, uh, not even particularly recommended, but... We want, always want to try to make it as good as possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, Chris, I, the last time we were together, uh, at least supporting our conference was 2019. We did bump into each other at MHS a couple months ago. But yeah. I remember in 2019, I'm running around like a crazy man trying to organize and run the conference. And, and often I, I forget to eat. And so you would kind of grab me and give me little bits of the keto chow and, and, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's fantastic. I, I, you know, I can attest yep. that, uh, it's def definitely, uh, very, very tasty. So, yep. um, we, we actually we came to the 2020 one as well. Ah, uh, you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We, we probably won't want to forget that one, but, uh, yeah, that, I, I, I kind of conference put, though. What's that? I thought it was a good conference. I actually, yeah. that one was unique because unlike most conferences where we're stuck out in the hall, yeah. that particular one, we were actually in the the room. And so I, we got so to, we hear got to hear all. all of it. Um, yeah. I think I, I, one of the things that stands out to me the most was Dr. Tro. Was it Dr. Tro? I think it was Dr. Tro. Or maybe it was Dr. Lenskis, uh, maybe Brian. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he actually talked about Nif Barker. And so I messaged her on Twitter. I'm like, dude, you're totally getting a call out right now. It was, it was pretty funny, but yeah, uh, yeah but I, I, we, we enjoyed the 2020 as well. It was small and intimate. And we did bring all the exhibitors into this gigantic room where, you know, we, we had a, a much smaller crowd and, you know, we were being careful back then. So we, we kind of put it out of our mind. It was, it was uh, yeah. quite the was event. And so, you know, <laughs> we're looking forward to this one next year that, that we won't have uh, the pressure to, to shut us down. And, you know, it's, it's great that you're attending and um, also, you know, your comments that you're always trying to tweak and I love it. You're such, you're such a computer, you know, engineer, geek with the with the virgins and we were having a conversation previously that you know i i kind of like to hack into uh everything that i do and you know we have common interests where we build gaming computers and That's we right. like to do the networking and and i think in in our careers it's the same thing as i, I you know i found uh looking at people's health and taking a deeper dive in to figure out how it works how we can make it better and you know we come from two different worlds but at the end of the day we're trying to help improve people's health mm -hmm. absolutely well and that's that's one of the important things about that's one of the reasons why we do this company is, and we we haven't ever done it as a way to make money. Um, in fact, if we were trying to make money, we've done a, a lot of things really wrong. Yeah. Um, well, we're learning. Yeah. Also, don't hire family and friends because you can't ever fire them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, trying to help people's lives be better is really what we're trying to go. And that's, we actually even, Miriam and I ran a conference. Mm -hmm. um in 2019 and we did one this a year. virtual one. one this year. um yeah in 2021 in 2022 we did one and then we decided we were going to do meetups instead mm -hmm. because as you know it's running a conference is a big a job <laughs> it is it is amazing how you can affect the lives of people though yeah so that's one of the reasons why we want to support you guys plus I mean, we can drive to Denver. Yeah, we love it. It's close. <laughs> yeah, well, you are close. And I, I wanted to say, you know, the last time that I was in uh, Utah was at the Homestead Crater. Oh, right. Oh, nice. Really? Yeah, nice. where we my daughter and I, <laughs> we, we got scuba cert certified and, and it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a natural hot spring. And people say, what yeah. are you going to Utah in the middle of the winter. To scuba dive, of course. To, to scuba dive. 
Yeah, so it's it's like an eight hour eight hour drive. So when we have the conference, you have to come. But we appreciate your support, and you know we've sat down. You know we've had drinks together, we've had lunch together, and you know the passion just oozes out of the two of you. And you're all about community and everything that you have done and continue to do. Just just kudos, and um, I think that makes your company sustainable. Yeah, we. When we came to the first Keto Con, a lot of people looked at us and they're like, oh, another shake company. Yeah, Great. There it is. <laughs> and then we came back and then we came back and then we came back and we're still here. Um, so because we, we still want to help people out. Um, yeah. And I think that's what it you know comes down to. Like we hear stories and, you know, people say, hey, you know, I, I couldn't eat because of this, you know, problem that I had for this little bit of time and I just used your shake and. It just really helped me, you know, kind of get over this, this hump or over this, you know, problem. And so it's like, okay, we, we have a purpose, like we have a yeah. reason to keep going and yeah, it's, re it's really nice. And uh, lately uh, Ninja came out with this appliance called a Ninja Creamy, mm -hmm. which if you haven't heard about it, it's this ice cream maker that is, it's nuts. But uh, you, you you literally mix up keto chow with just the water and heavy cream if you want to. You pour it into uh, a, this pint container, and it, it makes ice cream, like better than store-bought ice cream. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect, I think it's the perfect way to eat keto chow because as an adult, I should be able to eat ice cream for breakfast, which is what I did this morning while I was in that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder if there's a way you could... Uh bring the ice cream to denver you know bring bring the mixer and oh, we could. pull that off I, i'm sure it has to be on ice and pretty pretty cold the ingredients we actually might be able yeah, to pull could. that off at denver probably could because we just need the machine and a plug oh uh, a cooler yeah actually, and we would need a little bit of dry ice yeah okay well <laughs> we could totally pull that off well i oh. will <laughs> yeah well i will keep bugging you about that okay <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's something that we've never even considered because usually when we go to these conferences, we we fly in with um, you know anywhere from eight to ten suitcases between yeah, the, those of, of us products. that are coming with all the product in them, and then we go to a Walmart and we buy a cooler because mm -hmm. it's cheaper to buy one than it is to fly one, mm -hmm. and we buy all this other stuff, and then when we're done, we leave it at the Airbnb that we rented. Yeah, or give it to a local. <laughs> so. With a trip to uh, to Denver, we could totally pull that off. That's yeah. a that'd be fun. That would That's be great. Fun. Yeah. So I have to ask: over the past several years, has, has the business? You know, the, it seems like the business is surviving. Have and it's moving on. I, I'd like to ask. Yeah, we definitely have had some bumps um, with uh, the pandemic. We had a little bit of slowdown, um, but mostly it it didn't really affect us until like a year and a half later when the ingredients started being shorter. Yeah, uh, so shortages and availability. Lot. We had to like really be careful with what we were ordering so that we could keep everything we wanted in stock. We just had to order smaller runs um, so that we could just make the ingredients go further. So uh, yeah. that I think has been the hardest part, just trying to balance that out so that our customers would be able to get what they wanted. And but and then overall, like just trying to make sure that our, our we keep our area clean and everybody, you know, try to keep everyone well uh, yeah. here at the office too. Was I'm sure everybody had to deal with the same thing. So yeah, but we're uh, we have a bigger and bigger team. Mm -hmm. um, back in well, in, in the end of uh, 2021 or was it 2020? In the end of 2020, I was the entire creative, creative team. team. Yeah, like yeah, have. the packaging, all of the stuff like that, that was me by myself. Um, since then, we've hired several people to do video stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Marketing, I think we're up creative. to four graphic designers now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. There's this magic number of 50 employees that we're really close to. And once you hit the 50, then all this stuff changes. But we haven't quite hit that. We, we skip around it really close. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And we do all of our own fulfillment too. We don't um, outsource that to anybody. We actually have a team here that cares about the product. Does the uh, we do the technical support yep. here as well? Uh, most of our customer service team 
Most of them are on keto. Are too. doing keto yeah, or we're doing keto and now are doing keto. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but they've they're talking to people on the phone. I guess uh, I don't know if that's what put them over the edge. They've they heard about the health benefits and started doing it. But mm -hmm. we we like to have the control of the fulfillment so that we can make sure that people are taken care of and we're not just shoving it off to Amazon or something like that. I mean, you can buy keto chow on Amazon, but it's better if you buy it from our, our very nice people who mm -hmm. live in Utah. Yeah. And I think overall, like as a company, we really just want to try to be inclusive and kind to everybody. I know at, at KetoCon and, and at your conferences also, we've made sure to go and talk to every vendor like we don't need to have negative competition between each other like we're all trying to build people up together to help heal people to help people on their health journeys and so it's just been really great to be able to you know get to know different vendors to get to know different people like you um that we can call upon if we need and just it's just been fantastic yeah so look i think everything you're doing is great and the packaging looks fantastic. And the two of you make yourselves available for your podcast. It's, you know, you, you can tell that it's just a, a family business that's that's growing. And, you know, hopefully it'll continue to grow and get you get you past the, the 50 mark. And uh, <laughs> yeah. the, um, the other thing you bring up, Miriam, is actually really interesting. So um, at least in our conferences, we sometimes get criticism about uh, having exhibitors and products and that it that it sends the wrong message that this is all about meal replacements or you know yeah. not eating real food and, and products and you know my my response back is that look you you guys said it at the end of the day it's about eating real food but I believe that without an industry you can't have a movement. And just like we're supporting you today and you support the exhibitors at, at KetoCon, we're, we're, we're in this together. And I think there's different ways to approach it. And we have to support industries like yours and others. Yeah. Well, and in turn, like we help pay for the conference because we get an opportunity to exhibit, but then that also helps the conference grow. Um, so I, I think it's great. And I, and I think that, you know, everybody needs to, you know, be picky about their health and care and mm -hmm. they can choose not to look at the exhibitors, right. At all. Um, and especially at your conference, um, you have a lot of doctors and dentists and nurses, and they know a lot more about more people's health than, you know, even we do. And they know which patient you shouldn't show them this because they would have a hard time with, or which patient, you know, that, that just needs some training wills for maybe six months. And yep. this might be something that could help them. I think that, you know, we, we, if we have that, you know, broader view of overall health, like, and not keto policing things and just say, you know, what, what is going to benefit everyone? What can we do to help elevate everyone? Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of just elevate ourselves. Yeah. Let, Let's not forget that uh, we also invite the, you know, the general public, non-healthcare professionals That's is right. actually a larger, more important, uh, not more important, but just as important uh, aspect yeah. of the audience. And and it's funny, I, I, I joke that, you know, the conference is run by a, a healthcare professional myself yeah. and people get the impression that the conference is just for healthcare professionals. It, and it's like, look, I'm not appealing to my own authority in this situation. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, I, I'm just an individual that is passionate about the nutrition as much as the next person. And I, I happen to be a, a, a physician and uh, perhaps it adds some credibility. Yeah. Maybe I am appealing to my authority, but I, I, I do want to make it clear that, uh, you know, the, the audience is very diverse. And so it's healthcare professionals, mm -hmm. not non-healthcare professionals and the, and the general public. And mm -hmm. yeah, also Miriam, yes, you bring up the point. Um, we can't have these conferences without you in the audience. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's the same. We never uh, set out to, to, to make money. Uh, you know, my passion is just nutrition education. And, you know, don't, don't go into the conference business, as you know. Yeah. You hey, the best way to make uh, $10,000 doing a conference is to start with 20. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> well said, my friend. <laughs> so, 
um, you know, we're get, we haven't had the conference in three years, and you know, we we figured we're gonna we're gonna give it another try. Yeah. Um, in 2023, and you know, if you support nutrition science, you need to to come to the conference and support what we do, and that includes the exhibitors and the audience. And again, I, you know, I stand firm that we need to support industry that is behind this movement. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, it doesn't actually hurt our feelings if people don't like shakes, yep. by the way. We're totally fine. If people that. come up <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know what? I actually don't like your shakes. And I'm like, well, if I got news for you, we also have electrolytes that have oh, no sweetener, true. no yeah. flavor, no color. It's literally just electrolytes. And they're like, oh, okay. I guess we can be friends. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. We didn't even talk about the electrolytes, which you know I still have yeah, some okay. bottles that you can you can add to to any kind of liquid. Uh, anything you want to add about that? Um, do you want to talk about that, Miriam? I mean, it's just like we said we yeah. we we started off with the with kind of a mix electrolyte that's like all the different ones. You kept on getting um, cramps cramps at night, and so I wanted to get magnesium and the our magnesium it tastes horrible oh it tastes like fire but it it's works awful. so good like it works really well it's really absorbable like and and you can get magnesium pills i know i have magnesium pills too um but uh the liquid magnesium it works the instantly. magnesium chloride it absorbs yeah. really fast so it's just another thing to put you know in your toolbox yeah and then dr barry was like hey i'm I think he got tired of taking a bunch of different supplements like iodine and chromium mm -hmm. and potassium and stuff. He's like, can you just make me, here's a laundry list, make me a supplement. We're like, mm -hmm. okay. So we made that too. But, and even if you don't like our electrolytes, we can still be friends. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to help people on their journey to better health. And our favorite thing of all is when people reduce with the help of a doctor, yes. reduce the amount of um, uh, prescriptions Medication. that they have to take. That's yeah. the best thing in the world. Get all the stuff out of the way. Let your, your body can heal. Itself. Amazing body. You know, so you we, we go ahead. I was just going to say we we say that it's not keto that's actually healing people. You're just getting things out of the way, and people's bodies are designed to heal themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing. Anyway, that's, that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. So we, yeah, we call that the de deprescribing. And, and so you, you uh, are hearing stories from your, your customers about uh, success and, and we get that as well. And I love that we, we have keto chow as an option to our patients. And uh, again, it's their choice to, to use it or not to use it. And, you know, I like the option because I really think long-term, although it's, it's called keto chow, there's different definitions of what keto is, yeah. but we think backing da down on fat intake while increasing protein is a great long-term solution. And you that's available if people want, want a, a, a quick meal replacement and they can um, just, just adjust the fat intake. The, yeah. the only catch is you have to bring the fats with you to work to make the mixture. Right. Well, my preferred thing to do is to mix up like six or more days worth of keto chow at and a time in the fridge. and just leave it in the fridge because they keep anywhere from, well, depending on the fat you use with heavy cream, it keeps six days. Um, with my children, it keeps two days because mm -hmm. they steal it. Um, and so I have to make more, um, but then I can just grab it and go to work. Mm -hmm. Now you can keep stuff at work, which also works as well if you want to change it, but mixing it up ahead of time is by far the best way to do it. Um, then you can just grab it and take off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, well, well, great guys. Well, let, let's finish up. I, I, I like to ask you, you probably already said a, a lot of it, but what do you enjoy most about coming to these events in person? The people. I love the people. Like, it's just so nice to make those relationships and to, to get to know uh, people. And there's so many kind people in the world and they just want you know, what's best for you, what's best for 
everybody. And it, it's, it feels so good to come and feel like we're on the same mission with people like you with, and, and, and the speakers that speak, you have a diverse amount of people so that I can understand something that Chris mm -hmm. can understand something and we can all get something out of it and turn around and, and help improve our own lives. And so I just, I just really enjoy, you know, getting to know the people and, and just getting that rush of, you know, these are my people, like they're helping me grow and, and move forward with my life. And then I can go home and apply some of those things that I learned. And it's just, it's wonderful. Yeah. Hanging out with doctors who are so kind as to mm -hmm. take a couple seconds to explain to someone who doesn't know what A1C is. That's right. What A1C means. <laughs> that was you. You explained it to me <laughs> the first time we met. That was, that was the Keto Fest <laughs> in 2017. Mm -hmm. So, well, well, at least someone understood something that I tried <laughs> right? to explain. So, yeah, uh, Miriam, Miriam said everything I wanted to, so. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, to our audience, um, we want to thank Chris and Miriam, and Keto Chow will be exhibiting at our conference again. Chris and Miriam will be there, so I encourage you to consider attending. We have a great lineup of speakers and again, uh, if you support our conference, you're supporting nutrition science. For more information about the conference, please visit lowcarbconferences.com. So that's all for now. And it's great to see and talk to you, Chris and Miriam, and uh, we'll catch everyone next time. Right. Bye. Bye.